silly, senseless arguments to avoid uh, saying what the real thing is. They think this has harmed the Prime Minister's image. The censorship is useless. And those who want to view the documentary know how to do it. There's no way you can stop it. Is there any dispute that a very large number of people died, were killed? And the majority of them are Muslims. A large number of Muslim women raped. There are those who have disappeared. There are those who have been uh, rendered homeless. Is there any doubt that this happened in 2002? Is there any doubt that the police did not act? I mean, they don't say these AHP and Hindu activists set fire to themselves. So is this being one-sided? Because Godra happened. BBC 2's uh, investigation of this was a very high standard. And I can't point to a single mistake, single flaw in this documentary. Uh, attack the Supreme Court, undermining the sovereignty and integrity of India, create threats to public order between communities and all that. It's completely over the top. If you are a good government, you can learn from this documentary. Hello and welcome to the News Minute. Last week, the British Broadcasting Corporation had aired a documentary about uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi and what happened in 2002 during the Gujarat riots. This documentary has triggered massive controversy. The union government has termed this documentary as a propaganda piece and a result of a colonial mindset. And the Indian government has invoked emergency laws to block this documentary on social media platforms, particularly on YouTube and Twitter. And this has not gone down well with opposition parties, where uh, the opposition parties have criticized the government for invoking emergency laws to block this documentary. To talk about this, I have with me the former editor-in-chief of The Hindu, Mr. N. Ram. Thank you so much for speaking to us, sir. What are your initial thoughts about this documentary, sir? I watched it more than once. I watched it carefully. I went back to it because I, I had to make some comments on it in an interview and so on. So I watched it carefully, sometimes frame by frame, and uh, because we, we have access to it. We've had access to it. The It's a very well-made documentary. It's the first part of a two-part, two two-episode uh, film, uh, which, is, which really is in, investigative journalism of the highest order. It's been rigorously researched, as the BBC says. It's been very carefully researched. It's followed every rule in the investiga investigative journalism playbook because they went back to the, you know, if, the if there's an allegation against someone, they approached that someone and gave an opportunity to that someone to respond in full, and they used it. They approached the Indian government, which declined to, you know, the invitation to respond. They got in Sopandas Gupta, Sopandas Gupta, who's, uh, who's not always supporting <laughs> the way the 2002 genocidal pogrom was handled. He, he's, he hedges here and there. Of course, he says the attempt was in that documentary, the attempt in the first episode, attempt to destroy uh, Mr. Narendra Modi politically. He says there were some exaggerations, but he also admits to some of the facts. For example, the Haran Pandya, he doesn't know much about it. And uh, also the way uh, the, Mus the Muslim question was treated. When he's asked about Mr. Modi's resignation, uh, Supandas Gupta says that, uh, you know, that's a very uh, smart thing to do because uh, if, you give, if, if you give a resignation and it's rejected, that's the end of it. Uh, end of the, and he uses the word the resignation drama. Hmm. Supandas Gupta is very free here. And today I heard him on another on a TV channel. Uh, you know, you know, he 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 was really attempting to do contortions. Where you know, he said he was asked, "Is it the colonial mindset?" He said, "No, no, it's condescension and so on." I'm saying this because all, all this is there in the documentary. And there was a, yet another former BJP youth wing leader who was a political scientist, and so on. So they followed every rule in the investigative journalism playbook, or rule book, if you like. And uh, they did not attack the Supreme Court. That's one of the charges made. I think there's nothing wrong in criticizing the Supreme Court. If you're dis even strongly criticizing the reasoning behind the judgment of the Supreme Court, the only thing you can't do is to use all kinds of violent language or question the motives of a judge. That is contempt. But other than that, you are at liberty. But they don't even do that. What they do is 
they talk about the SIT, the Special Investigation Team, it, and say it didn't find it. It found no evidence to justify prosecution, and the Supreme Court relied on that. That's it. And and and, and yet, of course, they say that the question remains unsolved. Just you know, those who are uh, uh, response uh, accountability has not been established. Those are the messages that come out. But it's but this question. is where this is where the BJP says that uh, you know. The attitude of the BBC was dismissive towards uh, the Supreme Court, and uh, this matter has been dealt uh, by the highest court of the country. And uh, the BBC is uh, just trying to undermine uh, the institutions in India. That is a that is a preposterous assertion or allegation they or objection they make to this because. Uh, what, what what really comes out? Is there any dispute that a very large number of people died, were killed, and the majority of them are Muslims? Many of the figures suggest something, the ballpark figure is 2,000. Hmm. The government data show a little less. And then a large number of Muslim women raped. There are those who are disappeared. There are those who have been uh, rendered homeless. Is there any doubt that this happened in 2002? Is there any doubt that the police did not act? There were scenes in that documentary which showed policemen standing there. Uh, I mean, it, it just shows that either they were helpless or they had been given instructions. But those were, those are real scenes, authentic scenes. When uh, Jill, Jill McGivering goes there, young Jill goes there at that time. Now she's older and she's the central narrator or one of the central narrators of this film. But you also have shots from that time, 2002, when she goes to Ahmedabad. What does she see? Things that fly. They show a Hindu man who, who lived in a Muslim majority locality and his travel business is burnt. And he, he cries. Is this being one sided? And what about Godra? They, they go to, that's how the whole thing begins, the documentary. They go to Godra and show these scenes. It's hor horrific. Jill McGivering is there. And uh, they say that uh, Muslim extremists are behind this, uh, in that case. So is this being one-sided? Because Godra happened. Go I mean, they don't say these these uh, AHP uh, Hindu activists set fire to themselves, as some people have said. Uh, they, they, they make a very sober statement uh, based on, uh, you know, what they were able to gather. And then look at what's new here. You asked me what's new. Yeah, what's new, yeah. Yeah, they, I think the, the key thing is the uh, is the inquiry report commissioned by the foreign secretary Jack Straw. He, he's interviewed on it, and Karan Thapar interviewed him again after the after the after the controversy broke in India. And Jack Straw basically says he's very close to India. I was very concerned. Of course, we could not do anything drastic like breaking diplomatic relations, uh, but so but I'm very very concerned. And the reason he he wanted to know the truth, and then he justifies what they did because the Indian government then I mean the present government says don't interfere in India's internal affairs. I'll come to that in a minute. Hmm. And they commission this inquiry, they go into it, and uh, the summary is very clear. What the inquiry uh, releases, I don't have to repeat it uh, here. That uh, yeah. Uh, the, uh, the, the caravan has also published that full report. Yes. Yeah, you, you, sent me, you sent me the link. Yeah. And uh, the caravan has the whole thing. That is the report. Everyone can read it. That so-and-so uh, uh, is responsible. Uh, you, you know, this is uh, de deliberate uh, inaction under instructions. Much worse than what, uh, was or, or, uh, what, what was believed originally and so on. I don't want to go into all that. But that report is crucial uh, in, in revealing the mentality, the, the thinking behind uh, the concerns that Jack Straw and uh, others in the UK government did uh, express. Then you have the diplomat. They have him standing uh, with his back to the camera. Hmm. An actor's voice then confirms this. And he gives a little more detail uh, about it what he remembers from that time. Then they interviewed Jack Straw himself. The top man, he said, I, 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 it was my, my decision to do this. He, he alone decided this. The foreign secretary, very senior minister uh, at that time, 
See, and then he, he did it. Then you have uh, the Yorkshire family, hmm. the Dawood family. Dawood family. Dawood family. Imran Dawood. And then uh, they go that day, just uh, they go to the Taj Mahal and drive along uh, with uh, the driver. They have this something in Arabic on the windscreen. Hmm. And, they, and they are attacked. Two of his uncles uh, disappear. And Muhammad, their next door of nowhere in Yorkshire, is that butcher, you know, he's badly stabbed and he sees him die. Uh, they're killed. They're, the uncles are gone, the two uncles. And uh, the next door neighbor are gone. And this man escapes. Uh, uh, you know, how he escaped, uh, it's a miracle that he escaped uh, those, uh, those killers. And then you have uh, uh, Imtiaz Patan, isn't it? Im Imtiaz Patan. Imtiaz. I Imtiaz Patan. Very, very moving scenes. He goes to the house and describes in vivid de graphic detail uh, Esan Jaff uh, Jaffrey's uh, uh, the, the table where he sat, where the phone was, and a very vivid account of what happened. Women and their children scre screaming. He was, he was right there. And he, he made some phone calls. He claims, uh, he says he was a call to the then chief minister that's been denied. They also report the denial. They don't say it happened. They give both versions. And then finally, uh, Esan Jaffrey says, I'll go. And what a heroic thing he did. Go and sacrifice himself for them. And still a lot of people were killed, but some of them escaped. These are completely new things in the, in the documentary. Uh, and uh, I think the, uh, the BBC's, BBC Two's uh, in, investigative uh, investigation of this, I think, uh, was a very high standard. And okay. I can't point to a single mistake, single flaw in this documentary. It, it meets every test for me. Okay. And to attack but, this, hmm. uh, uh, to attack this, uh, okay, I'll come to that. Yeah, so uh, the union government's, uh, you know, reaction to this documentary has been unprecedented. They have invoked the emergency powers uh, to direct social media platforms to take down this documentary, to block this documentary on the orders of uh, uh, the ministry. And, uh, you know, the question is, uh, when can you use this emergency laws? Uh, there had, there, the opposition parties are now criticizing, saying that uh, this is completely illegal. Yes, I think that I think they many lawyers are coming forward to this. You can't use this against streets and so on. And I think uh, this is ripe for a legal challenge. The, this application of this Rule 16 uh, uh, to, to this case is completely out of order and illegal, unlawful. I think this is going to become a big issue. And I think they've been very, very ill advised to uh, to use this uh, to this provision. And you know, already bad, uh, you know, these rules themselves are very bad. And, and the Bombay High Court uh, has, has issued a stay. The, the cases have been transferred to the Supreme Court, where they have been lying uh, more or less dormant. And I think this will kickstart the process again, I hope. Uh, because this is a test case, I think, how an already bad rule, an already uh, a rule which gives the executive excessive powers, particularly the INB secretary, and a group of, ex you know, uh, government uh, excessive power, arbitrary power to take down on grounds of national security or, or and or public order. Uh, so I think this is uh, ripe for challenge uh, legally. And I think uh, apart from that, it's, you know, apart from being illegal, it's anti-democratic, it's repressive. But I want to say one more thing. Yeah. And if... There have been rational decision makers, sensible decision makers. What would they have done? And in fact, Sapandas Gupta was asked this. And his final answer was, the government had to do something. Let's move on from here. They had to do something. Now, what is this something? This is what I read about it in an article in the Deccan Herald. And uh, uh, this is uh, the writer said, uh, this is an example of the Streisand, Streisand effect. Hmm. Let me explain to those who haven't followed this. Barbara Streisand uh, was a well-known American singer and actress. And in 2003, you can look it up. The, the, 
uh, uh, this. She filed a famous or notorious lawsuit against a photographer. This photographer was, uh, you know, documenting on film the co the whole coast of uh, California, the coastal, and uh, so he was taking it from a helicopter, and uh, this was uh, an, this was, uh, was going to be available free to any user, including scientific researchers and so on. So it's a clear case of uh, something done for the social good, or in this case, ecology and so on. It happened that her house was in the picture and she was paranoid about her uh, privacy. So she sued the photographer for 50, uh, 50 million US dollars. And to cut the story short, the photo uh, before it was uh, before the lawsuit hit, made the news. Only six people had viewed these photographs, uh, or rather, six there were six downloads, and mm. two of the downloads was by Barbara Streisand's lawyers. After it got publicized, they, it was down viewed more than 400,000 times and reposted on news sites and elsewhere on the internet. So then people began to call it the Streisand effect, which means basically an attempt to censor, hide, suppress, or otherwise draw attention away from something only serves to attract more attention to it. And you know but that. Michael, yeah. So this is what the government has invited this effect by this act, not only excessive, but uh, over the top, completely ill thought, I would say acratic. You don't know what's for your own good in this case. What would a sensible decision maker have done? They would have said, you could have, you're free to say no comment, or you're free to say I disagree with it on just, just like that, or on this or that. Or I said, I, I don't have time to respond to it, whatever you can say. But to make all these, uh, you know, put out all these uh, missiles, uh, attack the Supreme Court, uh, uh, undermining the sovereignty and integrity of India, uh, uh, and, uh, uh, you know, uh, cre create threats to public order between communities and all that. It's completely over the top. So I but think... It uh, is, but that's my question. Is censorship a valid, you know, response to this documentary? Of course not. Of course not. It's it's preposterous. And this, why would Indian government do also, something like that? No, the other point is the censorship is useless because you and I know that if you put out if, if it's not on, the, on BBC World hmm. and it's only can be viewed on the iPlayer, BBC's iPlayer, then it, it can be viewed only in the UK. Yeah. And all the time, somebody will upload upload it to YouTube. Not on Twitter. Twitter only has a link, but YouTube. And as soon as uh, B, it, it, uh, it's uh, brought to BBC Studios' attention, they will have it taken off for copyright infringement. So many of these uh, links, which have been targeted by this uh, the order on, on YouTube and Twitter, are already dead. Mm. And those who want to view the documentary know how to do it. There's no way you can stop it. In fact, a friend of mine said, Everyone I know either has seen it or will see it very soon because it's available. People who are techies will know uh, how to get it. How to do it. Mm. It's impossible in a country like India where there's so much social media and so much, uh, uh, you know, technology aware awareness uh, that uh, to keep it. So what is the sense of this? Uh, that? So on no, that that's, what I'm, that, that's what I'm trying to find out from you like why is that uh, the indian government is reacting in such a way that they want to just like you know block this completely and uh, what exactly are they trying to do here is that something which is very very personal that modi is uh, you know uh, Mo modi doesn't want uh, the others to see it or like what exactly is is going on they don't say we are doing it because of the Prime Minister's image is at stake. So they use all kinds of other things, Supreme Court or uh, sovereignty and uh, 
integrity of India? Has it, has it advocated secession? Has it disputed the territorial integrity of India or the sovereignty of India? So they're using all kinds of uh, silly, senseless arguments to avoid uh, saying what the real thing is. They think this has harmed the prime minister's image. And then it doesn't become the, he was not the prime minister then. He, he was the chief minister of Gujarat. There are many questions about that, even from, it's also reported that Mr. Vajpayee wanted him to resign at that time. Ms. Adwani thought otherwise, all kinds of reports in the media, it's no secret. So, uh, so I don't think uh, it makes any sense. That's why I use the word akrasia. Akrasia, going back to Greek philosophy, is you do something you know is not in your interest. You do something you know that is not right. So why do it? Normally, you would uh, you would have that knowledge at your disposition, but something comes in the way. So what's come in the way is this uh, obsession about you know this extreme intolerance of any criticism. Anything that appears to criticize the prime minister or his backstory. And that's, I think, the only reason I can think for this. But Swapandas Gupta, if you ask him, I said, you had to do something. They did something, you know, nothing very much, but it, to show their displeasure, you can't leave, leave it untouched. Now let's move on. <laughs> so, so at the end of the day, you got a very bad, uh, your international reputation, which is already bad on free speech on suppression of rights, on how institutions are being subverted or undermined, including including attempts to undermine the judiciary. This is going to make it worse on, on, on something that you could have learned from. If you, are, if, if you are a good government, you can learn from this documentary because there is so much that is moving. So much, and you know, you know what the UK High Commission, the inquiry, uh, you know, concluded. You know what Jack Straw started. You know something about the Yorkshire family, which lost people who are, you know, in a tragic way. You know what happened to the Esan Jaffrey, uh, the, the massacre in and around his house at that time. So I think you could learn a lot from this documentary. Instead of that, they are demonizing uh, the, 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 the BBC itself. Okay. One thing that struck me in this documentary is uh, the disclaimer of, uh, you know, before the documentary starts, like BBC had reached out to at least 30 people and yes, none of them were like willing to be a part of this documentary, fearing for their safety. And, uh, you know, that's something which is absolutely shocking. Is this, uh, you know, uh, like, is there a sense of fear? Yes, of course, there's, uh, people are scared, many of them. You say, uh, oh, I'll be targeted because you, you, they, they have these raids uh, very selectively, not against anyone in the BJP uh, and even people who, uh, who are, who, who are uh, you know, who, who, who committed rape or accused to commit rape, they're let off uh, and bail uh, and uh, so on. So it's a completely one-sided application of law it's a massive violation of the breach of law. So people are afraid that something will happen to me. Or even if they are brave, some family member will say, you may be brave, but what about us? And I think uh, that, uh, you rightly pointed out the significance of that. They start out by saying, because they could have had more people, and these people didn't want to speak. And also perhaps, Mr. Ram, perhaps, yeah, yeah. perhaps even people who support voted for the BJP. I don't know. I'm speculating here. It's possible. Why not? There's a large number of people voted for the BJP in, in 2019 and even in 2014. So that these 30 could have included those who wanted to speak out but were scared. And also, Mr. Ram, I wanted to talk to you about uh, uh, the information technology rule and uh, the laws for the digital media. Uh, you know, the government has invoked uh, the rule 16 of uh, uh, you know of uh, the information technology rules uh, uh, is there well, you know when this came up uh, there was a lot of uh, you know pushback from the media side uh, but uh, you know still there are uh, you know certain uh, media outlets who say that uh, the legacy media should have done something more uh, 
to you know uh, try and uh, protest at that time uh, when the rules were made or when the amendment was made but the legacy media did not do that uh, and now because of it uh, the independent media houses and all those uh, you know publishing houses uh, uh, have uh, you know are facing music I, I i think to be fair to the mainstream or established media the may uh, there were a number of reports and articles and editorials criticizing opposing or criticizing these rules certainly in the hindu and the indian express and various other places i i, I read them uh, and also there were uh, learned uh, uh, deep dives by uh, people like apar gupta the internet freedom foundation and so on uh, a number of lawyers also wrote about it so i uh, so I, it's i'm surprised to hear that uh, this was not you know not uh, discussed it was also taken to high courts the bombay high court granted a stay it still remains in place and this i think this should be a violation although it's been transferred to the supreme court the stay has not been undone as far as i know and uh, also the madras high court uh, you, you should see the order tm krishna uh, went to court and that's been transferred to the supreme court the, i think there was an observation made that no coercive action should be taken uh, in this and there was a challenge to all the rules not just rule 16 so uh, i i don't think it's uh, fair to say that uh, in this case there are many issues where the legacy media or the mainstream media do not take up for example kashmir i think they've not done enough at all or and so on and suddenly some major media houses uh, uh, you know row the other way in terms of you know doing propaganda for the government that's also there but this is an area where i think there's been a fair amount of uh, discussion critical opinion express good reporting and then supplemented by uh, what's out on the digital media the wire the wire has done a lot on it but you talked about the legacy media i think they've also uh, 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 so these people should be told don't over generalize don't think that only the digital media do this all on every single issue even the editors guild i think took it up and and several foundations took it up uh, so i think uh, that, that's not uh, that's not correct but there is more and then the other thing is maybe it was not sustained because a stay was granted hmm. so there is an impression that uh, it can't be enforced now right sir thank you so much for uh, speaking to us uh, you know sharing your opinion thoughts on uh, multiple issues uh, it was pleasure talking to you mr ram thank you thank you it's good that you had me here